Hi everyone, I'm Anne Marie from Brambleberry.com. Thanks for joining me on today's episode of Soap Queen TV. Today, I'm going to be delving into all the questions you had on how to make milk soaps. These questions were taken from Instagram, so if you're not following us on Instagram, our we're at Brambleberry on Instagram. Give us a follow and maybe we'll answer your question next time. So the first question comes to us from Vine and Branch Soap. And she asks, and this is about cold process soap. So the kind of soap where you add the lye and the water and the milk together to make something that is something new, soap. So it's cold process soap making as opposed to melt and pour soap making. So she asks, if you add milk just as an additive, not mixed with the lye, do you have to reduce the amount of water in your lye water mixture? Also, what's a good amount to add as an additive to really notice the difference in your soap? Thank you, can't wait for Anne Marie's new book. Well, thanks so much for asking that question. So let's go into a couple ways that you can do milk in your soap. So first of all, you can do 100% water replacement. So instead of using water in your base recipe, you could just use 100% milk in there. And if you did that, your soap would be very luxurious, right? Because 33% of your entire recipe would now be basically milk, fat, and water. Another way you can do it is adding some uh, at thin trace, kind of like an additive. And you could either do that as like a powdered milk or a powdered milk and water slurry or straight up like goat's milk or camel milk or regular cow's milk. And so Vine and Branch Soap asks, if you add that milk as an additive, so at the end, like say you get to thin trace and then you add the milk in, do you need to discount that water in the first part of the recipe? And the answer is yeah. That milk that you're adding at the end is a liquid. And essentially what the liquid is there for in a cold process recipe is to be a carrier for the lye or the sodium hydroxide. So if you are going to add, say, in a 10 ounce recipe of soap and you're gonna add three ounces total of liquid, you could do like 1.5 ounces of water up at the front and then add 1.5 ounces of milk at the end after thin trace. Because realistically, you wanna make sure the total liquid is exactly the same and if you add too much liquid, you're gonna end up with a soft soap because one of the things that four to six week cure time is for is to ensure that the soap dries out fully, evaporates all that excess liquid. So you don't want too much liquid in there. So the short answer is absolutely, you do wanna discount the amount that you're adding at the end from the front of that, uh, the water that you're using. What's a good amount to add as an additive to really notice a difference in your soap? You know, if you're using at least 25% of your total liquid as a very luxurious, lovely, uh, full fat milk, I think you can notice a difference uh, for sure. So Island Spring Soapworks asks, what's the best way to avoid getting a partial gel with milk soaps? Mine always seem to get at least a little bit of gel even when placed in the refrigerator or freezer immediately upon pouring. It's a great question. Since milk has so many natural sugars in them, the sugars heat up the entire recipe. So what I like to do is you can freeze your milk, so actually turn it into a frozen cube form, and then add your lye slowly while the entire thing is sitting in an ice water bath. This keeps your lye and milk down to 75 to 80 degrees. Then I usually will do my oils right about 105, even down to 100. So I start with a much cooler, a much cooler entire mixture. So that's one of the things. And then two, I almost always put my soap in the freezer instead of the refrigerator. And that is because precisely as you mentioned, you're getting partial gel. Now I should mention for those of you that don't know what gel phase is, it's a perfectly natural part of the soap making process. It doesn't hurt one single thing. It just sort of changes the color of the soap. And so when you're cutting through your bar, some of the soap will be slightly darker and more translucent in the middle of the bar when you get a partial gel phase. This is totally fine. It's just aesthetic. It doesn't hurt the soap at all. But if you're selling your soap and you like consistency in your soap, it can be annoying. So try to get those temperatures a little lower and then put it right in the freezer when your soap gets done and when you're, when you're done pouring it. And that should hopefully help. Okay, so Black Barn Soap and Sweet Basil Soap Shop both ask kind of very similar questions, which is why are you straining the milk and the lye mixture and what's the best way to make homemade milk, like hemp milk soaps and not have it be lumpy? And that bag, straining it isn't fine enough to catch all the clumps. Great question. So when I make any of my nut milk soaps, I really like to do it from scratch, right? Because that's confirming that it's one, fresh, and two, it doesn't have any additives like carrageenan or any of those kind of thickeners that a lot of the store-bought soaps have that can throw your milk recipe into a tailspin. So I like to make my nut milks from scratch. It's an extra step, but to make sure that your soap turns out right every single time, I personally think it's worth it.
So yes, I do use a nut bag to strain all of those milk mixtures and that really helps a lot. And with the pulp, you guys, I will dry it out and I'll bake and make cookies and that kind of stuff with it. So make sure when you're making your nut milks, you're doing it kind of in a food grade way so you can use that byproduct, the pulp too, for lots of good things. And then the next question is, why are you straining the milk and the lye mixture? So on Instagram, there was a photo of me kind of straining what looked like it was kind of a lumpy situation. And you're like, well, what is that? When you add the lye to the milk, the lye automatically starts to bind with the fats in the milk to turn into soap. So literally you have kind of like a soft soap sitting there and you're like, well, what do I do? do with this soft soap. So what I like to do is strain out any bits of the lye in the milk that I've done already, just to make sure one, that there's no undissolved pieces of lye. Remember your milk mixture is opaque. You cannot see if there's undissolved pieces of lye. So that's a safety issue. And then second, if any of those lye molecules have bound with the milk molecules already and turned into kind of a soft soap, I don't want that in my regular recipe because I'm gonna have to stick blend that in and make sure it gets fully homogenized in. So I just strain all that out. And that's why I'm straining kind of more of a thick and lumpy mixture. It's really an extra step. Honestly, a lot of soap makers wouldn't go through it, but since I'm really looking for consistency and production with all of my bars, that's why I do that. The English Body Shop asks, other than special skin sensitivities, what's the benefit of using milk versus water? I've heard many people speak about the lack of lather with goat milk soap, so I'm curious about the benefit, or is it just a preference? Such a good question. So there's a few benefits to using milk in your soap. First of all, it has naturally occurring lactic acid. Lactic acid is something that helps promote skin turnover, AKA exfoliation of your skin. And one of the key reasons that we wash is not just to uh, remove dirt and smell, it's also to help our skin get a new fresh layer every seven to 30 days. And so when we are washing with a little bit of something that has a little natural exfoliant in it, like a lactic acid, it helps reveal soft, smooth skin underneath. Second, uh, since Milk is so high in fatty acids and lipid profiles that are so good for your skin. So nourishing, so moisturizing, help really smooth it out. It just feels better on your skin. So if you have sensitive skin or dry skin especially, or if you're in an area that's really dry, having a milk soap versus a traditional soap is gonna help keep your kind of skin's natural lipid profile a little more moist and probably eliminate the need for any sort of lotion after you take your shower. Another reason people might want to use milk in their soap is A, because they are raising some sort of milk producing animal like goat's milk. Goat's milk people raise, uh, do soap a lot actually. So there's a lot of crossover. And then also from a marketing standpoint, consumer perception is really important. So if you have a business and there's something that you can do to make your product stand out on the shelves, you should definitely do it. And milk soap and milk products are something that consumers are really starting to understand is great for their skin because of the nourishing and moisturizing properties. Kin Forever 3 asks, I use milk from my Nigerian dwarf goats in my soap. Nigerian dwarfs have a high butter fat content in their milk. One of mine has a full 9%. That is high. So should I be making adjustments in my recipe because of that and does it affect the super fatting? This is a great question. Super advanced. I'm glad you're asking it. So the short answer is unless you're an advanced soap maker and unless your goats produce the same sort of milk fat every time or you're testing it every time and you really know, I wouldn't be making adjustments to your recipe each and every time. Now, if you're finding your soap is too soft and the reason it would be too soft is because there is a lot of milk in there. There's a lot of milk fat, a lot of milk solids, a lot of like you're saying butter fat in there. And so that might not be, be fully saponified, right? Because there might not be enough lye to fully saponify that which means that milk or that fat is still just in your soap just there, which will weigh down lather and make your soap more soft. So if you are finding that as an actual problem and you're not loving the rich lotion-like lather that your, your Nigerian dwarf goat's milk soap is giving you, you can cut your super fat down to 2% very easily. Remember, a super fat of zero or a 0% lye discount is still a perfectly balanced bar of soap. We tend not to do it because human error, well, People miss way, that kind of thing. And a little bit of extra super fat left in the soap does make the soap feel better. But if you're finding your soap at say a 5% super fat is a little bit soft for your taste, you can drop it all the way down to 2% safely. 
At the end of the day, of course, a lot of soap making is really just personal preference, right? So what you love, another person isn't gonna love, which is great, right? That's why there's enough room for so many cool soap makers in our entire community. So I really wanna see all of your creations on social media, so make sure when you make your milk soaps, no matter what kind of milk soaps they are, you are hashtagging Bramble on, so the team and I can see how you're using our products and also what innovative, cool things you're doing. You inspire me every single day. So until next time, you guys, I can't wait to see what you make. Bye.